This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another MIDI Composer 101 tutorial, and in this lesson, we're going to continue our look at importing footage into Media Composer. Now, we're going to get more specific about importing. We're going to talk specifically about importing graphics into Media Composer. Importing regular clips into Media Composer is fairly straightforward. In most cases, we actually don't even really do that anymore. We're in a lot of cases AMA linking to and transcoding. But I want to talk about graphics because they're a little bit of a different beast. And you have to be very specific about how you want to bring this footage in so that it comes into Media Composer correctly and you don't find yourself having to do more work correcting things than you should because you should have just imported it correctly to begin with. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, now I said let's command and tab into Media Composer, but believe it or not, we're actually going to command and tab into Photoshop to begin with. Now, Photoshop is going to really be sort of your go-to application for figuring certain things out before you head on into Media Composer. In most cases, what you're trying to figure out is what is the size of a particular image. Now, probably about 90 to 95 percent of you probably have Photoshop on your computer, one variation of it or another. If you don't have Photoshop, you're going to use another photo editing application really to give you the size of the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these images here. I'm actually going to take the large image. I'm going to drag and drop it into Photoshop. I'm simply going to navigate up to image. I'm going to come down to image size. And what's important to keep in mind is that in most cases it'll be set on inches. What we want is pixels. Now, I'm working in a 1080p 23976 project, so I know that the dimensions of the project are 1920 by 1080. In this case, you'll see that my image is 2000 pixels by 644. Now, because this is a keyable element, a lot of people think that, you know, maybe I need to get in and actually format this to be that 1920 by 1080. But to be honest, I really don't. This is something that we can set up inside a Media Composer, but it gets to be a little bit tricky because it's exceptionally important that you know the size of your image before you start getting in and trying to set things up properly inside a Media Composer. Now, what I've done here, something a little bit different. I'm just going to cancel this here. I'm going to grab my other image and I'm going to bring this in. And you can see I just brought it into the same comp. What this is, this is actually a bug. It's actually 300 pixels wide. I don't remember how high it is, but I mean, the most important part here is that it is wider than it is high. It's about 300 pixels wide. And this is a situation that I sort of get all the time. I have people emailing me bugs to put into a show. And normally, you know, I sort of say, can you give me, you know, an Illustrator EPS or, you know, an AI file that I can take and blow it up as big as I need to? How often does that ever happen? In most cases, it's a tiny little JPEG, okay? So let's talk about this inside a Media Composer. I'm just going to close Photoshop here, and we're actually just going to replace that down here. We'll quit out of Photoshop. Don't save. Let's Command and Tab into Avid Media Composer. Now again, like I said, in most cases, you're not going to find yourself importing footage very often. You're going to find yourself AMA linking to and transcoding this, or obviously as a version 842, just linking to the footage and transcoding it. But with graphics, you could do that. But for me, I still find myself going old school and importing graphics into Media Composer. So let's talk a little bit about the import window. What I'm going to do is simply right click, navigate down to import. Of course, you can also find that up at file. You can navigate right down here to import. I'm going to right click. We're just going to say import. Okay, now you're brought to the file selection window. Now, in most cases, what people do is they don't really think about what's going on in the options. They simply select the element they want to bring in. They say open. When it looks a bit odd, they're like, why do things look like that? I'm going to come into the options tab for one second. I'm just going to put everything on its default. Now, in this case, what we want to do is we're going to want to bring in our element, our alpha channel. We're going to want to invert on import white equals opaque. I know that sounds a little bit odd that white is opaque and it's invert. This has really been like this since probably the dawn of Media Composer, but this is the correct setup if you know that your element is, you know, white is what you want to have that's not going to be cut out and everything that's black is going to be cut out. Okay? Now in this case, this is a PNG file. So what Media Composer is going to do is it's going to look at the file and anything that is that transparent uh, space that's around our logo is what is going to be cut out. Okay. Now I'm going to leave this on image size for current format. 
I'm going to leave the color levels as do not modify. Remember, this, in most cases, this is what's going to be for RGB. If it's 601, you're going to set it to be scale from full range to legal range. We can get in and change the duration to be, let's just make it 60 seconds. Why not? And I'm simply going to say OK. Now, this is sort of, again, like I said, the most common situation. I'm going to bring in the large image and say open. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the exact same bug. Now, in most cases, like I said, this is people that don't get in and adjust the options. They just bring the elements in. And then when they look at the logo, first question they have for the large one is, why is it stretched out like that? You know, the, the, you know what's wrong with the system? The system must be broken. Then they take a look at the small image, which just gets worse. Or take a look at the quality of that. I mean, we're sort of at normal quality. Even on high quality, that looks terrible. Well, what we need to do when we bring these elements in because one is larger than the frame size, one is way smaller than the frame size, and because we don't want to get in and do all that work in Photoshop, we need to think things through a little bit when we're importing because we're going to need to set up each import slightly different from each other. Okay? What we're going to do is I'm just going to delete these elements here. And let's just deal with the large image first. Okay, I'm going to right click, I'm going to come back to import. Remember, anytime you import an element, you're always going to be going to your options down here. Now, in this case, the drive is set correctly for the G Speed Studio RAID. The resolution is DNX 175, which is perfectly fine. I'm going to say options. Now, you'll remember that when we brought this image in, I told Media Composer that it was sized for the current format. Well, what that means is that Media Composer is assuming that that image is 1920 by 1080. So what's going to happen is no matter what the image size is, Media Composer is going to force that to be 1920 by 1080. Now, if you have an image that's already 1920 by 1080, perfect, no problem. Media Composer is not going to force anything. Okay. The problem is that we're dealing with two completely separate sizes. Okay. So let's come down. Now, we're not doing any DV importing, so we don't need to crop or pad anything for a DV scanline difference. Now, the next two options are really what you're going to be using when you're talking about uh, non-uniform imports of graphical elements, meaning that they don't match the frame size of your current project. We have two options really. Do not resize smaller images and resize image to fit the format raster. So what does that mean? Well, let's actually deal with the second one first. The resize image to fit format raster, what that basically means is that in most cases, you're going to have a larger image that is going to be resized to fit the format raster. Now, you might be thinking, well, didn't we just do that with image size for current format and it took it and stretched it? That's not what's going to happen. By resizing the image to fit the format raster, what Media Composer is going to do is it's going to look at the image and say, oh, okay, in our case right now, this image is larger than the frame size. We're not going to worry about the height right now because it's not bigger than the frame size. And what we're going to do is we're going to shrink the image down horizontally, widthwise, to fit the frame. We're going to leave the vertical exactly the way that it is because now it's fitting inside the format raster. Let me show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say resize image to fit format raster. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to come back to that large image. I'm going to come down and I'm going to say open. And there we go. Here's our image now looking correct in our timeline. Now you'll see that if I come back, I'm just going to hide this and go to the desktop just so that you can see. When I hit the space bar, that's pretty much the way that it should look. And inside a Media Composer, that's really it. Now, of course, the most important thing is, is that key channel there? Yes, it is. Boom. There we go. Okay. So let's talk about the other option. What we're going to do is we're going to right click. We're going to say import. Now, this other image that we have here is the bug. It's very small. It's going to go into the lower right-hand corner. Again, you saw what happened if I took that image and I sh and I basically uh, told Media Composer that it was the same as the format raster. It blew it right up. Well, if I do the same thing with resize image to fit the format raster, it's going to take it again. It's going to look at the horizontal because it's obviously more proportionate than the vertical. And let's just go with resize uh, format to fit format raster here. We'll just choose the bug again. If we leave it the same way, what it's doing is it's going to take that image, it's going to blow it up to be huge, which is not what we want. What we want is to leave this element alone. Just bring it in the way that it is. What I'm going to do is right click, say import, come to bug, let's come back to options. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, no, 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 just leave this the way it is. Don't resize anything that's smaller. I'm now going to say import, we're going to import that bug, and there we go. Okay, so I could basically take this element, I can drop it in. 
I can now take it and place it anywhere that I need it to go. Let's just put our safes up here. Let's make sure we got our window open here. I'm just going to promote this to be 3D so I can easily take it, grab it, and bring it right over here like such. Okay. Now, common situation that editors run into. You've got, you know, 50 still images, and you've brought all 50 still images, and you've imported them. And I'm just going to delete these elements again here. Okay. And you're going to right click, you're going to say import, you're going to come to, let's just use the large logo. You're like, okay, you know what, awesome, I know how we're going to bring this in. We're going to reset to the format raster, except the problem is that you've left the alpha channel as do not invert black equals opaque. And you say, okay, go. Again, we're going to that large image here. Let's get it in here. And you go, oh, well, that's not right. Well, now what am I supposed to do? And let's just say again, you had 50 elements, you're going to delete those elements, you're going to go back in, uh, you know, you're going to go back into your options, that's already too much work. Don't worry if you've brought this in and it's actually inverted, because we can get in and change that after the fact. I'm just going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to drop this in. I'm going to step into effects mode, and you're going to see that in effects mode, what's going to happen is, I'm going to come to the effects editor, everything looks sort of the status quo, okay? What's going to happen is when I promote this to 3D, I have the ability to come down to the foreground section right here. I'm just going to turn that on. What I can actually do right from here is simply invert that key. Now you're going to notice that we have all of this black, the black at the top and the bottom, not really helping us here. No problem. For what we're using it for, you can always just crop it just like such to get the element back where you need it to be. Now, obviously, again, we've added the step in of cropping only because we had to basically reformat this to fit the raster on the left and right. Now, if this was a full frame element, all we'd have to do is simply hit invert, boom, done. Now, again, it's a simple matter of time saving. If you don't want to go through that step each time, basically just delete your clips. And actually, let's do this here, okay? Why don't I show you how I would fix this? You'll see that the element is wrong here. It's in my timeline, and we've inverted it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that back to be invert key, just like such. All I'm going to do is I'm going to select this element. I'm going to delete the associated media files. I'm going to rebatch import. We're going to say offline only. We're going to select our element. We're not just going to say import because that's going to bring it back in exactly the way we had it before. I'm going to come in. I'm going to override the clip settings with the current settings. The current settings are what I'm setting up right now. All I'm going to do to set this up is simply say invert on import white equals opaque. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to say import, and in a matter of seconds, that logo is back in the correct key method, ready to go in any project you happen to be working on. Okay, now one last thing that I should mention is that in some cases you might be given PNG, Targa, or TIFF sequences that you need to bring into Media Composer. If you have that situation, all you need to do in the import window, if I come down to options, is simply come down here and say auto detect sequentially numbered files. And now any target TIFF or PNG sequence you might be bringing in will be brought in very simply as a clip in your bin, ready to drop into any timeline you happen to be working on. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.